The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Reclining at table with his disciples, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified. Amen, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another at a loss as to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out who he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. After Judas took the morsel, Satan entered him. So Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now none of those reclining at table realized why he said this to him. Some thought that since Judas kept the money bag, Judas, Jesus had told him, buy what we need for the feast or give something to the poor. So Judas took the morsel and left at once, and it was night. When he had left, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified. And God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself. And he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me. And as I told the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say it to you. Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, though you will follow later. Peter said to him, Master, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. So focusing in on a couple of the events in the Last Supper here, and we have two things happening. We have Judas who is going to betray Jesus and we have Peter who is going to deny Jesus. And I think there is a, a difference there. I mean, Judas is very deliberately planning, scheming, selling, looking to how he is going to betray. Peter, on the other hand, filled with confidence that he is going to be able to follow Jesus even to death. But at some point, his fallen human nature is going to catch up with him and he is going to ultimately turn his back on that path. So these two elements, Judas and Peter, and there we're going to contrast them a few more times or compare them as well in the coming uh, um, events of our Lord's passion. So Jesus is here at the Last Supper. He speaks about his glory. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. So the glory of our Lord is his obedience. The glory of our Lord is going to be his sacrifice. The glory of our Lord is going to be his accomplishing that mission for which he was sent. And again, the world won't recognize his glory immediately. They'll just see his gruesome death but it is in his death that his glory is being unlocked. And again, Judas and Peter, neither are ready for that glory yet. I want to focus for just a minute uh, on the prophet Isaiah. And uh, it's a beautiful reading. This, this, and it doesn't, it doesn't match up with the gospel exactly, but the prophet Isaiah here says, Hear, O islands, 
O distant people. And so the prophet is speaking to people away from Jerusalem, distant lands. And he's talking about the fact that the Messiah is going to gather the, the scattered Jews back together. This is the glory of Jesus. This is Jesus being lifted up and drawing all to himself, okay? But here, O distant islands, distant people, gathering together the scattered tribes, if you will. But it gets down to the end. And this is, you have to listen carefully here. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob. Remember Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob is the father of the 12. His name is changed to Israel. And he's the father of all the, the nations of Israel. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, to all peoples. So this is the prophecy of the Messiah isn't just to gather up the lost tribes of Israel. He's going to be a light to all nations. Remember Simeon, if we can go back to Anna and Simeon, when Jesus is presented in the temple, this is when he's just a little baby, you know, days old. And uh, Simeon takes baby Jesus and says, now you can let your servant go in peace. My eyes have seen the salvation of the world, a light to the nations. So Jesus is this light to the nations together, all people. And that's his glory. That's what's unfolding. That's what Jesus is speaking about at the Last Supper. Even as Judas is betraying him and Peter is going to deny him. So our Lord's glory is set where he will be raised up and draw the whole world to himself. So we have the tragedy of betrayal and denial. And then we have the great, the beauty of the glory of our Lord gathering the world, gathering the, all peoples.